Hello, Ives. Uh, just wanted to record a video on um, uh, how I've been looking into the into the dashboard and GraphQL using Overmine. So this is just from one perspective. Um, so I did some refactoring here, <coughs> and then we'll have to decide if we want to go down this path. Uh, so here I loaded up the thing. And if we look into the dev tools, we can see that we mounted the recent sandboxes. And since we're like, this is where I'm at, like the first page, it's running all the logic to grab the user and stuff. And then we have the specific stuff here related to setting the order by stuff and also grabbing recent sandboxes. As you can see, it's GraphQL and then it adds those sandboxes to the dashboard. So <coughs> the way this is set up is I just created this dashboard new thingy. And in our uh, namespace index file, we we have state and actions, and then we add uh, GraphQL to it with its queries and mutations. So, <coughs> sorry, the queries are set up like this. Um, you have like a teams and then you use a query type from the GraphQL uh, overmind library and we give it the type. And these types are created by the Apollo schema downloader. So if we look here, we got all the different types up and running for these queries and mutations. <coughs> so basically what we do is we just wire those types into the query and then they work. Uh, and here you can see we also have variables. So this is the convention Apollo uses. It, I think it just grabs the uh, uh, path sandboxes folders. This becomes like the type name and then it adds variables if it has variables. <coughs> um, yes, and it's the same for mutations. <laughs> we grab all the uh, types from uh, from the automatically created types and then we create the actual queries um, so if we were to download a new schema and something changes or we would change some of these mutations um, or like the queries here themselves and we run the schema downloader thingy it will also validate to see if does these variables match the schema and stuff so you get that validation as well which is super important um, it's kind of sad that it um, like puts all the types into their own files it would be nice to have like a like we do we have like an index file where you can import all the types but that is just how it works <coughs> anyways so uh, what actually happens here now when we load up the um, uh, recent sandboxes? So I refactor it a little bit. So you can see it's it's a lot cleaner in the component itself. We just uh, run the action when it mounts. And then currently I'm just using state and actions here where we check if we have an error. And we also uh, slice the current sandboxes <coughs> uh, to, get, to get the 20 last ones. Now, um, what I would do here is I would create like recent sandboxes as a derived, and that would do the slicing and stuff. So you would have like recent sandboxes, deleted sandboxes as derived state, and then the logic for grabbing those would be uh, inside the state instead. Uh, but this is um, this is a start. So. Uh, let's look at the state. So the way this has changed now is that previously you had this get filtered sandboxes or something. <coughs> that is just changed to current sandboxes now. Where since we have the sandboxes in the state itself, uh, you have order by filters and sandboxes and it can just give you the current uh, sandboxes. Which I understand now is only controlled by order by filter and filters um, like how they should be shown and then you would have like recent sandboxes would be um, uh, 
uh, recent sandboxes would be the 20 latest and stuff. Um, <clears throat> yes, also things like most used template, uh, that it also becomes a derived, it just cleans up the components so they don't have this kind of logic inside of them. Uh, they're just for displaying purposes. What's kind of nice there is that we, we do get uh, a lot of typing here, so for example, uh, the sandbox here is from the GraphQL types. So we know exactly what we get there. Um, also the, uh, let's see, order by, order by. Yeah, like the direction is also from the GraphQL types. Um, so that is also something we get for free. Um, yes, so how do we actually grab the sandboxes? So when recent sandboxes mount, uh, currently I'm, I'm setting the order by uh, field and order here. Um, uh, I'm not like, uh, don't have super insight into how the dashboard actually works and how it differentiates the different pages. But anyways, this is what I'm doing. And then uh, all the queries and mutations has become effects. So dashboard new has an effect called queries where we have recent sandboxes. So if we go to queries here, we have boop, 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 recent sandboxes. So that is this effect. And it automatically has the typing for the payload so that we give it the correct payload and the return result is also typed now. So we can go and grab the actual sandboxes and then I just assign those sandboxes because this is the difference here. Like with Apollo, it <coughs> it has this super crazy stuff under the hood where it normalizes everything and does a lot of magic that you don't know about. Um, and the question is really, do you care about it? Um, I think um, it's kind of scary to take data and uh, hide how that data is stored uh, because you don't have any you don't have any insight um, but if you're comfortable with that that is of course uh, of course a benefit with Apollo because you don't have to think about how this uh, state is stored but then it's kind of like you don't have any access to understanding how it's stored and you don't know when it's stored and when it's uh, cleared out and when it's updated, like you don't have any insight into that. You just have to trust the system. While in this case, you do have complete control. So you choose how to store these sandboxes. And I chose to store them in, in the, um, just like we store other sandboxes. It's just an object where the key is the ID and then we have the sandbox. And then we rather derive which of these sandboxes do we want to display in certain states in the dashboard? And whenever you changed um, the states in the in the dashboard, like recent my sandbox is deleted and stuff, that mounts a page which runs the query which updates the data, and then you have full insight in the dev tools of when things are set, when it's updated, and all that good stuff. Um, Yes, so I didn't want to go further with this until we decide how we want to do it. Uh, okay, uh, I actually checked now <laughs> how Apollo does the typing stuff. Uh, it basically works the same way. Um, you get all the, the types produced for you into files. Well, obviously, because that's exactly what we're doing in the example I showed you. Uh, though I was initially very skeptic to how that um, that typing is being used because as you can see here it just uses it with use query and you don't know uh, that these types actually fit with the query uh, unlike in Overmind where we define recent sandboxes we define the typing with the query so whenever the schema or, or uh, the query is updated um, it's in sync uh, here you could First of all, you have no idea if you actually use the correct type with the correct query. Um, 
And if you were to use it multiple times, you would have to make sure that you were actually using the correct um, typing. And that's just not how I think TypeScript should work. You should not be telling TypeScript what kind of data you have that TypeScript should tell you. Um, that said, um, with Apollo, it's um, it's quite easy to fix that. Instead of having like using the use query hook, you would create a hook for every type of query. So you would rather have use products data, for example. Uh, and then that would use the use query hook uh, where you define the typing. So whenever you use use products data, <laughs> Uh, you are sure that the typing is correct. Uh, so that would be basically the same as we do here. So what it, what it comes down to is that um, uh, how what I think it comes down to is how much stuff do you do in addition to querying this data? If all you do in the component is grabbing that data and displaying it, um, it it's really clean with Apollo. Uh, yeah, there is a ton of magic happening under the hood, uh, but maybe that doesn't matter. But if you um, want stuff to happen related to querying data, maybe you want to talk to side effects, you want to transform that data uh, and stuff like that, uh, you want to ensure that queries are not being run again when you change between pages, you want to optimize the experience really. Uh, then I think the overmind approach is better um, because then you have full control of when the queries run, how the state is stored, uh, ability to, to transform, uh, running other side effects uh, without um, overloading the components with tons of logic. Um, so yeah, like everything, there's no correct answer. There are only options. Um, so for me, I'm not, I'm not really sure uh, what we should do here. Um, um, I think, well, what I do think is that with the complexity of code sandbox as as a product, it's always good to have flexibility. Uh, with Apollo, you have less flexibility because it does so much stuff under the hood and things are happening inside components um, where things tend to get bloated and difficult to link querying data to other side effects and stuff. But yeah, that's just my opinion. And I'm not going to say that, oh, we do a big mistake by using Apollo in the components, but I know that if we do that, we will have less control of what's happening. We will have less control of the user experience and uh, if some other complexity is added, we will have um, less control of that as well. Cool. Bye-bye.